Hi everybody, I just wanted to go over uh, the rule of thirds real quick. Now this is just from Wikipedia, right? And you can see here, if you look up in the uh, upper uh, right here, that um, they're showing you some pictures where the focal point is at that intersection of the lines, right? That have divided the image into thirds. Now, important notes, especially, you know, in a learning situation, what can go wrong when you're using the rule of thirds, especially when you're using it to uh, analyze a composition? The lines have to be perfectly placed, right, mathematically. So if, if you have this line over too far to the left and that far line over too far to the right and these two lines in the middle too close together, it doesn't make any sense. It has to be subdivided perfectly. So keep that in mind. The other thing is, um, I, I think Wikipedia really sums it up. It, um, it's about aligning a subject with the guidelines and their intersection points. So for example, here, this rock piece here is, is this rock formation is at the intersection, but it's also lined up. Now you don't have to have both to make it work, right? You can, you can have the horizon line lined up with that that line that's delineated the lower third or you can have it at the intersection right so you can use the guidelines and you can also use the intersections right so i think they sum it up really good here too the main reason for observing the, observing the rule of thirds is to discourage placement of the subject at the center or prevent a horizon from appearing to divide the picture in half right and then you can go on to read about its use in film and, and discussion about you know photographing still subjects, not facing the camera, the amount of extra room in front of the subject. You know, it's basically about creating a more dynamic kind of composition, right? Now, all rules are made to be broken. I want to emphasize that, right? This is a guideline. It's a, an important enough guideline though that even on, on the iPhone you can turn grid on, right? So when you're taking a picture, you see your composition divided into thirds, right? So you could, you you can actually place your subjects, you know, at that intersection, right? However, if you Google why the rule of thirds is wrong, you can read here. I mean, this is a pretty nice summation. The rule of thirds is actually a pretty weak compositional guideline. It does more to stop you making bad mistakes than guide you to making strong compositions. There's a lot more to good composition than just placing the main parts of your image at arbitrary points on a grid. Okay, so it's a starting point, right? It, it might keep you from making a really bad composition, but it doesn't help you make a good composition necessarily, right? And you could go on to see the myth of the rule of thirds here. This is a really excellent article from Photography Life, The Myth of the Rule of Thirds. And you could go through and you could read something about that. For example, when it doesn't work, when you have an ambiguous subject, or if the, if the subject matter of the focal point is too big to fit in that, uh, in that uh, intersection, right? And you can see here, and you find this a lot in, in classroom um, activities where we're analyzing subjects. It's a lot of times people try to analyze images that don't really fit to the rule of thirds. And as he says here, the mountain does indeed intersect with the top third line, but it also extends significantly above and below. So it would be a mistake to think that this photo is an example of the rule of thirds. So I just thought it would be helpful. I, I just looked at my own photographs. I've turned the grid on and, and shot before, and I've turned the grid off. I, I think that the success of a photo, uh, again, to reiterate what was stated previously, the rule of thirds might help you from making it from from shooting a terrible photo, but it doesn't help you making a good photo. What I look for <clears throat> is where is my horizon line? Not necessarily in this because this was this is a slanted, a skewed horizon line. But I'm I'm conscious when I'm photographing and making designs of symmetry versus asymmetry. Asymmetry is going to give you a more dynamic kind of composition that implies movement. Symmetry is going to give you a more formal, static quiet, you know, if you use those generalities, composition. Here, for example, you know, if, if, if I had to analyze this in terms of the rule of thirds, I mean, sure, he, this, he might line up with that third line. 
But the point is, I, I wasn't obsessing over that when I took the shot. I was taking a number of different shots from low point of view, high point of view, from the side. I was aware of the light. I'm looking at shadows. Uh, I would rather have this subject, you know, with, with an interesting shadow in it uh, and not use the rule of thirds than, than use the rule of thirds and lose something that I think is important. Here's another one, again, where I am not using the rule of thirds, but I am... I'm embracing the idea of not putting the horizon line in the center. I mean, sometimes I do, sometimes I break the rule. But here, when I took this photograph, I was more aware of what do I want to emphasize? Do I want to emphasize a whole bunch of sand in the foreground? Do I want to emphasize the sky? The sky here, and then secondarily, you know, the this beautiful reflective kind of ocean is the you know, is the focal point, the sky. So I wanted the sky to take up most of, of, um, of this composition. So, you know, I wasn't applying the rule of thirds, but I was applying ideas of, of keeping the horizon line out of the center and also emphasizing the area that I thought was most important. This is kind of an interesting one. I mean, this is not an art shot. This is a still from a video of, uh, of my son fishing. And, uh, and so it, the shot is more about capturing a moment and less about it being a, a beautiful composition. However, having said that, here's another way that the rule of thirds could come in handy is if you go to crop this, and let me just change the ratio, width and height plus resolution. If I'm gonna crop this to try to make it a better photograph, it's then, then, then these ideas of, of wanting to get the, you know, wanting to get the subject matter out of the center, cropping out areas that are probably not as interesting, and then keeping that, you know, the idea of, and notice how when we're cropping that rule of thirds is turned on, right? So let's just, just as an example, let's do something like this. And you can see that we're in the rule of thirds. Does that make it a better composition? I think I miss having some of the sky in there, right? Now, what if we just line up the subject matter, the, the focal point with this line instead of having to make it on the intersection? Now this might, if we think about it, is that a better photograph than, than the original, right? It's, it's asymmetric, it's off to the side along that one line of the third. There's the reflection in the water, uh, you know, you see some texture on the water. It feels a little bit cramped to me over here, but this would be, I think, in, in cropping and, and, and making edits to a composition that wasn't shot necessarily, uh, you know, thinking about composition, I might apply the rules of composition in terms of editing and cropping. Now here, again, is a still from a video, uh, my dog at Coronado Beach. And here again, I, you know, I don't recall if I was, no, of course I wasn't shooting with the, with the grid turned on because I was shooting a video. But here, just serendipitously, the dog is in that intersection, right? And, and would, I, would I adjust it? I mean, how crucial is it that it be exactly in that intersection, right? Not that important. But you can see that how the rule of thirds works here, where the lower, part the, the intersection down here where the sub where the focal point is focal point the line of sight is making the viewer directing the viewer up towards this open expanse of sand and reflection and ocean again another skewed horizon line which is above the center line right because as a traditionally trained photographer i was basically taught keep it out of the center right so slightly above slightly below never in the center i break that rule all the time but in this case, I think you can see how uh, it might work to have uh, asymmetrically placed focal points, uh, you know, in those areas where you have that intersection uh, where you're dividing the composition into thirds. Now, if we crop it from that 16.9 video format, and let's see, this would probably want to come down a little bit. And if we try to make it, you know, strictly adhere to to that rule of thirds, um, 
It is, is it a slightly better photograph? Maybe. It's a little bit tighter compositionally, a little bit less space to work in, a little bit, which makes it a little bit more dynamic in its movement, right? The thing is, though, sometimes you want symmetry. Sometimes the subject matter is going to be, I hate to say, more important than the composition, but the concept, the image, I mean, it's centered, it's right up front, it's a portrait of a stop sign here. Just scrolling through my, my photos library, I have thousands and thousands, probably 30,000 photos at this point. And I, I think the important thing to keep in mind, just to bring it to a close, is for me, while I take photographs for many different reasons, and a lot of times break those rules, this is the full moon out paddle boarding uh, at night alone on the, on the bay. Uh, here you can see the horizon line is right in the center. I'm subdividing it and I'm making, you know, the moon and the reflection of the moon, right? So I'm not married to the rule of asymmetrical rule of third kind of approaches. Um, a lot of times it's, it's going to be about capturing a moment, uh, a cockatiel egg or, a, or a, a, the dog or you know, pictures in the garden or portraits of people or just capturing, capturing images in, in life that, that I might want to look at later and not being, not being chained to the idea of each photograph has to be perfectly composed, but thinking more about, um, kind of the, the purpose of, of photography to begin with. And then if I do want to take one of these photographs and turn it into something, um, something I might, you know, I don't know, display or frame or present in a magazine or something, then I might look at it and go, should I crop this a certain way? Should I make it a square format? Should I, should I, you know, is there too much of this foreground showing, right? And in that case, the rule of thirds might come in handy. I might go, well, how does it, how does this photograph look, um, you know, with the rule of thirds applies? It gives me a guideline. It gives me a place to start brainstorming and analyzing the work and then deciding whether or not I want to embrace it or whether I want to display it, um, you know, as it was originally shot. So I hope this helps clear up some of the confusion. There's intersections, there's guidelines, and there's the option to use those guidelines and intersections and then there's always the guideline or, or the option to not use them but i think i'll leave you with this the important thing is i can always analyze my work in terms of the rule of thirds in terms of symmetry in terms of asymmetry and I can talk about why the image looks the way it does and whether or not it's successful or not successful uh, as a composition.